I'm off to Africa next. This is the epicenter for large animal encounters around the world, and I'm at the bottom of the food chain. <laughs> hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here, coming to you from our office today, but I am preparing for an epic journey to the other side of the world. Getting ready to go down to Southern Africa. I visited there a few months ago, but now it's actually time to start the construction process to start laying out this massive riverine type system that's gonna carve its way through this amazing landscape. Africa, if you're not familiar with it, if you've never been there, it will take your breath away. The sheer scale of everything is just massive. Supersized animals, hippos, elephants, giant giraffes, big lions. Everything is living in this area and we are definitely at the bottom of the food chain. But what I love about this project, it's gonna open us up to a whole nother world, utilizing the beautiful natural rocks that are coming from the actual property. The reason I'm, say, I'm talking about that right now, because of the scale of the project, I wanna utilize rocks that we've never used before. The reason I could pull it off on this particular project is because we don't have to take these large stones that are harvested from the mountainside across actual roadways. We're gonna carve our own roadways into the desert floor. By doing that, that's gonna allow us to carry 100,000 pound rocks and heavier. There's no way I could actually pull that off here in the United States or literally anywhere else in the world. So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to work with massive stones to create something that actually fits this amazing landscape. Down at the bottom of this feature, there's gonna be a gigantic 50,000 gallon reservoir. This 50,000 gallon reservoir is going to be critical for the overall functioning of the ecosystem and it's going to house our large submersible pumps. We're then going to pump the water 30 plus feet in elevation to the upper headwaters area where we create a series of giant cascades that are going to crash over a, over a hidden grotto exactly like we have right here at our office. The only difference is, just like Africa in general, it is supersized. It's not going to be a little 10 by 10 room. I'm talking about a 30 foot by 30 foot diameter underground paradise with their own secret waterfall. That actually, I shouldn't even be talking about it right now because that's not actually even going to happen until December, but we got to start planning for it now. Because of the sheer scale of the project, we have to harvest thousands of tons of stone to have on site to get ready for this project. The stones are beautiful, they're coming from the surrounding mountainside. I was able to go up in a helicopter to actually search for these rocks in the natural hillsides. So instead of going to a stone yard like I would normally do right here in the Chicagoland area, I'm actually going into the wilderness to actually pick and choose the stones. Once we have them chosen, we could then bring in the heavy equipment that we need necessary to extract them from the hillside, put them on the trucks, and then bring them over to the job site. The other thing that we're doing is I'm bringing in thousands, and that's a big number, right? Thousands of truckloads of soil to build up a large mound of earth to create a miniature mountain feature. This is gonna be unbelievable. The scale of everything is gonna be incredible. Not only are the boulders larger, the pumps larger, the pipes larger, but also the heavy equipment that it's gonna to take to actually pull this off. Gigantic excavators, large cranes, big earth moving equipment that could actually push and pull. The other thing that I have happening is I have teams of people that are gonna be coming through periodically throughout the entire project to assist me throughout the entire construction process. The other thing that we're gonna be doing is working with the local contractors, which I love doing. So we're gonna be working side by side with teams of local subcontractors, heavy equipment operators, electricians, carpenters, concrete guys, plant people, you name it, everybody, it's gonna be all hands on deck to pull this project off, especially in the time frame. Now I'm talking about not having this project done until the end of January, but that actually is gonna go by like that because of the scale of everything. I'm gonna be working for several weeks at any given time, then I'm gonna come home for a couple weeks, so I'm gonna be commuting back and forth, which is actually going to increase the overall complexity of everything, as well as the physical challenges on myself and the entire team for this epic project.
section here, corner of this bush area, has to be removed to allow us to get to the base of these mountains over here. Now it's just time to get that the material, start getting it staged because it's going to take a long, long time. I and mean, we're talking weeks of work. We have to move 2,500 plus tons of rock. So it's going to take weeks of work to actually make them accessible, get them staged. So when we return to the site later in September, we could actually start the installation process. <music> trying to minimize our impact but we also need to understand that there's work that needs to be completed. All right so if you remember Effin and I came to this location we scouted it by helicopter we then came in with a land cruiser but this was just a old pathway that was not even used anymore there was brush debris whatnot in the middle of the road. Effen then came back out with the construction team to start clearing the road to allow us access. So remember, this was all critical stuff. By scouting everything by air, it's one thing, but coming down on the ground, looking at grades, looking at our access points are key. So now we have, look at this staging area, everything that we have here. So what we're going to do is gonna bring the crane trucks in. We're limited with the current crane trucks that we have here, but we do have access to larger ones. So we'll be able to come in with the proper equipment at some point to start harvesting these stones. We are up at the edge of the boulder strewn area. So now we are going to start looking at some of these different stones that we can grab. We are limited today on some of the equipment that we have, but we are also identifying some of the larger pieces that we will need for later on in the project. So it's kind of a combined effort here. But once we start extracting stone, then we'll, that'll give us more opportunity to continue to look at everything to see what's going to work for us. We're moving the first rock, trying to see if we can break through, and it is pulling the entire machine. So that's a deep one. We we're just trying to play around with different things. We do not have the excavator up here yet. We we're trying to come up with the crane truck first to get some of the looser stones. location a little bit different type of rock pieces in here that, it, that we believe will work as we access this one before we did have them they, they cleared out some of the brush over here to allow access for the heavy equipment so what we're doing right now is coming in and just marking stones that we feel we would be able to get without too much destruction and then we could start moving those over to the site these bigger ones that are buried like this might be able to come in with the with the big dozer and see if it pushes if it does we can get the crane right here and he'll be able to get it because it's very easy just being a little bit more thoughtful on, on what we're trying to grab This project over in Africa is shaping up to be monumental in so many, so many ways. I just wanna share with you some of the design ideas that I actually discussed with the client before I came up with the concept, which I will share with you in a second, but you know I'm a big fan of mimicking nature. So going out into the wilderness and going to actually see river systems and lake fronts and these riparian zones that are just filled with life really kind of gets my creative juices flowing and I love to replicate that stuff. I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm taking what I see and then I just want to take these different components and I want to reassemble it actually on the job site. So when I come up to a river system like this, actually this the feature that you're looking at here is actually in Australia. We were out hiking, we were looking at different water features as well as natural areas throughout the area and we came across this river system and it was loaded with young people just kicking back, relaxing, enjoying the water. 
this is what happens when you get near an aquatic ecosystem. So it just engages you on so many different levels. But what I try to do is I try to imagine it without the water inside of it. Pull all the water out of it and actually look at the structure of the feature. So look at the big giant boulders, the scale of the rocks, the sizes of the, the slopes, the angles, the type of rock. Is it granitic? Is it a sedimentary stone? Each one of these is gonna have different ways that the water actually interacts with it. So this is actually perfect because the rock that we're gonna be using on this project in Southern Africa is very similar to this rock that you're seeing here in Australia. Now in this picture, this slide that I have here, it is clearly water worn. So that means the rock is gonna be a little bit smoother and that's because the water has just smoothed it out over time. If you go out just outside of the limits of the water feature itself or the river system, it's gonna be a little bit rougher. So what we're going to be doing is obviously I don't wanna go in and rip out rocks out of a river system. I'm gonna take rocks from nature, from quarries, from stone deposits and things like that, and I'm gonna reassemble them to mimic these natural features. And that's exactly what I'm going through here. And again, other pictures that I showed the client, different types of rock, this is not available in Southern Africa, but I wanted to show them kind of the artistry that it takes to actually build these features, how we're actually placing the stone, the different scales, of them, how the water actually is going to interact with the different types of stone. Adding in the mosses and the vegetation and the logs and structures like that are going to give it that naturalistic look that we're all actually looking for. One of my favorite projects of all time is actually down in South America. This is right after it was built, but this is very, very similar. And again, the reason I put this in was because it's very, very similar to the type of stone that we're going to be using in Southern Africa. And if you could see in this picture here, I have a uh, bridge right over here. So we're going to have bridge crossings. We're going to have interactions. The actual area that I'm taking this picture from is actually kind of a terrace area. So we want to incorporate as many of these different areas as possible, but we don't want to mess with the visual. The goal with this feature, just like this project in South America, was to make it look like the riverine system was there before construction actually started. So we want to kind of put blinders on almost and say, okay, there's structures over here, but I want to create this very unique corridor that's cutting its way right through this property. And if we pull it off properly, you would totally forget exactly where you're at. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna create an escape for our customers as well as the guests of our customers when they arrive on the project site. Laura Cleary, beautiful project. Again, just showing the different cascading boulders that we actually utilized. Okay, so here's the design I actually came up with uh, for the client. In order to be conscious of their privacy, they've asked not to show any of the structures. So I blotted these things out. But I wanted to showcase the actual water feature itself and more importantly, kind of the scale of the feature. So starting down here at the bottom, this is an existing lake. So this is a man-made water hole. It's actually for wildlife. We're going to put a recirculating pump system located right in this corner. We're gonna have a small recirculating waterfall kind of going right in this corner. There is gonna be a cart path that is splitting this natural feature from the man-made one. The starting point of this waterfall is gonna be hidden underneath this walkway and the ending point of this feature is gonna terminate here, is gonna be underneath that same structure. So it's gonna be underneath this boardwalk area. So it's gonna look like this river system flows and cascades, goes underneath the bridge, and then it empties back into this river system, even though it's actually two separate features. And the reason being, the water level in here is water quality is very, very poor. It's back basically a mud bottom pond. Water is very, very dark brown. It's not the look that we're going for. So we wanna have a very decorative feature here. So we're putting in a series of large filters, which is going to deliver the water quality that we're looking for. There's going to be an underground reservoir here. This is gonna be 38 feet or so in width this way, 70 feet long basically about 11 and a half meters by 21.3 meters. So that's significant. This is a 50,000 gallon underground reservoir. So just a huge volume of water inside of there. We're gonna have a pump vault located in this corner. We're gonna be recirculating water through a series of jets as well as the wetland filters and a series of waterfalls. The main pond right through here is gonna be right up against this. There's an outdoor terrace right here. So this is approximately 30 meters in this direction, which is about 100 feet 
feet and it's 19.8 meters it's about 65 feet in total width we're going to be about uh 1.2 meters deep or about four ish feet or so total in depth so this will be a beautiful kind of a recreational style pond now what i love about this design is from this terrace over here we're going to be able to sit and view this entire area and i want to drop in massive massive boulders over in here so i'm going to be back on site very very shortly the, the rocks that i'm talking about setting here are going to be 30,000 40,000 50,000 pound boulders which are just mammoth in overall scale and the whole idea with this is to mimic nature i want to create a riverine system that looks like it was here first here we're also going to have high water flow going through everything with all the different pumps that we have we're going to be moving 160,000 gallons of water every hour the other thing that we're always thinking about on all of our projects is as many viewpoints as possible so these are other buildings over on these edges these are going to be visible you're going to have a series of waterfalls and cascades that are going to be visible from different seating areas in and around the property i love adding in bridges as well as outdoor structures this is going to be some sort of a gazebo over in here just to kind of create a little bit of a rest area for the client and their guests when they're on site this is going to continue uh, rising up in elevation as we go higher and higher upstream because again mimicking nature we're going to have more of a mountainous style feature way up here at the headwaters and then we're going to add in small inputs of water throughout the entire feature so the waterfalls get more and more flow as you get further and further downstream a few of the challenges that we have this building is existing this is existing this is a roadway over in here so this is a very tight corridor that we have to work with so this is going to be this is only 60 70 feet or so in width so i want to fill that entire space with boulder and waterfall and cascades but also still try to tuck in seating areas and walkways and bridges as well as plant material to really pull this feature off 